What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the fighting game tutorial series, we are going to be going over quarter circle inputs in the fighting game template. On keyboard, we were able to perform quarter circle inputs, so I could press down, down right, and release down, and I would get down, down right, right on my input stack here. Then I could pair that with an action, such as my heavy attack, to perform a command. And there we go, we can perform our up from ground tornado. However, controller was a little bit different and it wasn't working exactly the same. It's quite similar and we could get it very close. However, it was just a little bit out of the way. So now I have my controller and I can do everything that I can normally do with my controllers. At this point, I will be able to trigger down, down right, right, just by moving my left stick. So I have an Xbox controller here. You can see the input stack is printing it correctly as I'm doing it. I'm going to come over here and my heavy attack is my B button. So I'm going to do quarter circle B to do my up from ground rising tornado with my controller. So I can now officially do quarter circle inputs with my controller as well. Awesome. I can technically do quarter circle backwards as well. Now, before we hop into this episode, I do want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon members and supporters who made this episode possible. Thank you guys for all you do, for all the love and support. Feel free to click this link in the top right corner right here if you want to become a Patreon supporter. Check out all the benefits that that gets you, as well as just support the channel and recommend some things that you want to see so that I can make tutorials on them. But now, before we hop into the episode, if you are interested in getting caught up in the series, I'll link you to this playlist in the top right corner right here which is the entire fighting game tutorial series. This will allow you to learn things such as our throws, special attacks, and all this fancy stuff that we can do on keyboard and controller. That way you can make the perfect fighting game that you've always wanted to make. Alternatively, if you don't care about that and you just care about quarter circle inputs, I will link you to this episode right here. This is the previous episode where we initially went over them and that was specifically quarter circle inputs on keyboard. A lot of the information that we learned in that episode will be useful in here as well. Now we can go ahead and get started on today's episode. So this is a code and blueprint tutorial series. Most of our logic is going to be in the code today. So we're going to go to Visual Studio. I want to go to my base player controller.cpp to start off. In the base player controller, we had set up logic to allow players to play on one device. So two players on one device like a keyboard or players to play on their own devices. So two players on separate controllers. There was one little case that I missed that is important for today's episode. So I would like to scroll down to my determine input device details function. For me, this is at the very bottom, but you can just scroll to it and find it. And in here, we were trying to determine if we were on gamepad or keyboard. And this worked for most cases. I even have special input set up so that if a player presses a player two specific input, meaning they pressed an input on the keyboard that was meant for player two and not player one's normal controls, it would pick up on that. Scrolling down past all that logic, we get to this section here where we were grabbing our game mode. Assuming the game mode could be cast properly, we were checking to see if there was a player two reference. If there was, we were making sure that the controller on the player two reference was valid. And if it was, we were going into this if statement right here. This was basically determining if the player had pressed a keyboard mode only input, do we want to take player two and disable gamepad input, or do we want to take player two and allow them to use the gamepad? So basically, are they on keyboard or controller for player two? This if statement was all we had in this logic. However, we had an else after this if statement that did this logic in here. And basically, this was just saying if the last input that was pressed wasn't one of those special keyboard inputs, was the key a gamepad key or not? Essentially, did we press a button on a controller or did we press something on a keyboard? And that was good, but this would only be reached if player two did not have a controller. We want this to be reached whether player two has a controller or not. We actually want this to be reached if player two doesn't have a controller or this if statement doesn't succeed for any reason. Either the second player wasn't already on a gamepad, or there was no keyboard mode input found. So for example, you were just using controllers the whole time. And I missed this little detail, but we should actually add this else statement here, which does the exact same thing as the else statement I just described. It's the same logic. I just copied it from this else and put it inside of this if statement as an else to this if statement. 
whether player two is on a gamepad or we pressed any particular inputs, we still want to check for this for player one. So we were essentially locking player one to only detect gamepad under certain circumstances, and we don't want to do that. That's why adding it as an else to this if statement is important. It allows us to always check for player one's gamepad or keyboard usage. And that is something I should have shown before, so my apologies for missing that. But after adding this back in, we will eliminate a bug that could happen where controllers weren't detected properly in your game. And now that that's fixed, we can go into our character class and specifically our base character. For me, this is the fighter template character and we're gonna go to the fighter template character.cpp. In here, I wanna check out my move right and move right controller functions. So I'm gonna scroll down till I get to these functions. And I have move right, which is for keyboard and move right controller, which is for controller. You could have just one function, but if you've been following the series, I have two just for dead zones and things like that. We can also add some extra assistance on controllers by having these two functions. But regardless of how you've done it, go down to your move right function and let's take a look at our logic. So we check to see if the device is a gamepad or not. If it's not a gamepad, we go into this logic. Like in the previous episode, I'm going to break this down a little bit for us. So the first if check that we have in here is to make sure we're not crouching or blocking. If we're not, we go into this if statement, check the direction that we are pressing and the direction that we are facing, and put the appropriate input action into the buffer. However, let's go down to the bottom of this if statement, and follow it down to the else. Here's the else. This means that we are crouching or crouch blocking. This is really important for quarter circle inputs because to perform a quarter circle, you crouch, press the direction you wanna move in and then release the crouch essentially. It works that way whether you're on keyboard or controller. If you're on controller, it's not really like you're releasing the crouch, you're just moving the stick that way. But that is logically what is happening in the game. The character is crouching and they're moving up to the direction they wanna be at. And at that point, the crouch has been released. This is something I should have gone over in the last episode because it will make our forward crouch and backward crouch more consistent to perform on keyboard. So I'm addressing it now, but we are definitely gonna need it for the controller. That's where it's gonna be super important. In here, we check to see if our value is greater than 0.01. Basically, are we pressing to the right? That's all that's checking for. If it is, we were adding the input icon to screen forward crouch. Now, forward crouch technically means crouch to the right when referring to the icons. However, we have to take into account the direction we're facing to determine if it was truly forward or backward. And to do that, we were checking to see if we were facing right. If we're facing right and pressing right, then we can assume that this was a forward input, or basically we're pressing in the direction we're facing. Previously in this logic, we were calling perform input logic with an E input type of E underscore forward and a press. I've commented this out now to update it to use forward crouch and press. Having this logic in here will make it way, way easier to perform quarter circles on keyboards because now we will be able to get these forward crouch inputs added to our buffer instead of just a forward input when we press crouch and to the right. So basically, if you had E underscore forward in here for your perform input logic, you can just get rid of that and change the perform input logic to be E underscore forward crouch. And I'm going to change the comment as well. If the icon being added to the screen is forward crouch, I want my input buffer to receive a forward crouch. And we're going to do the same for backward. So previously in the series, we were doing perform input logic with a type of backward and a press. But remember, we actually want to use backward crouch now. So I'm going to update my comment, backward crouch, and I'm going to replace what I had in there to E underscore backward crouch. Now, this is only if we were pressing right. So let's go down to the else if, which is right here. And this is if we are pressing left. So you can see we are adding the input icon to screen of backward crouch. And before in the series, again, we were using the perform input logic with the standard backward. So if we were pressing to the left and we were facing right, that is backward. We are pressing in a direction that we are not facing. But since we are crouching in this logic, we want to put backward crouch, not just backward. So I'm going to replace my perform input logic with a backward crouch instead of backward. So just like this. And I'm going to update my comment as well, just so I am aware of what's going on. Else, this means we are facing left and we are pressing left. 
So we were putting in a forward input and that would be correct, except we we're crouching. We want to put in that forward crouch input. So I'm going to replace my forward with forward crouch and update my comment. Now, those are the four places you have to do that. That is on the keyboard. That will make our lives a lot easier. We'll make it more consistent to perform quarter circles. But we definitely have to do this in controller. So let's scroll down to move right controller and make sure we make this change as well. Looking at our logic, you can see this is where we're checking to make sure we're not crouching and crouch blocking. And if we're not, we check what inputs we're putting in. But all this logic is working fine. So we can scroll through it until we reach the else statement where we are adding the icon to screen for forward crouch, just like in move right. And in here, we want to do the same thing that we just did in the above function. So we are pressing to the right and we are facing right. This is forward. But since we are crouching, we don't want to use forward. We want to use E underscore forward crouch. So I'm going to replace that and update my comment. The else means we are facing left and we are pressing right. That means it is a backward input. So of course, Perform input logic backward is correct, except it should be backward crouch. So replace backward with backward crouch and update the comment. Now that was only for pressing right, but if we go to the else if, this is pressing left, and we have backward crouch being added to the screen. If we are pressing left but facing right, then that is a backward input, and it should be backward crouch. So I'm just going to go ahead and update that as well as the comment. And lastly, this else is that we are facing left and pressing left, which means this is a forward input and we're crouching. So it should be forward crouch, not forward. Now, those are eight instances that we should update those. So make sure you update all eight of them between move right, move right controller. If you're only using one move right, then you only have four that you have to update. So four per function. And now our controller will very easily be able to pick up on these inputs. So we will be able to tell that we are crouching, forward crouching, backward crouching appropriately. All right, now I'm at the start of my move right function again. And what I actually want to do is update our stop crouching logic from the previous episode. So let's go to our stop crouching function. For me, it is right here. In the previous episode, I was checking to see if the player was pressing forward or pressing backward and automatically adding the forward icon to the screen along with the forward input to the input buffer. And same with pressing backward. If the player was pressing backward, we were adding the backward icon to the screen with the backward input buffer logic. This actually will only work for the one side though, and we do want to support it for both. So I've updated my if statements here. So the one that was previously just is pressing forward is now checking the direction. So I'm going to get rid of the if statement here and instead use this. We're going to check to see if we're pressing forward and we're facing right or we're pressing backward and we're not facing right, meaning we are facing left. If we are pressing forward and facing right or pressing backward and facing left, then we want to put the forward input in the input buffer and add it to the input stack on the screen. And we want to do this for the is pressing backward as well. So I'm going to get rid of that if statement and put this if statement in here. So I have if is pressing backward and is facing right, or is pressing forward and not is facing right. So basically, if we're pressing backward and facing right, or pressing forward and facing left, we want to add the backward icon to the screen and the backward input to the input buffer. At this point, I'm going to open the editor back up. There are a few things I'd like to fix up that are really quick and will make your game a lot better, play a lot smoother. And that is the crouching and jumping animations returning to idle when you exit those states and return to idle. And so on keyboard, I didn't notice it too much. But if we go into our animation blueprints for our characters, we go to our state machine within the animation blueprint. And there's a lot going on in here, as always. But the states that we care about for now are crouch returning to idle and end jump returning to idle. So let's start with crouch. So idle goes into crouch. Crouch has a few states you can go to from there. They all return to crouch before returning to idle. So crouch to idle is this transition rule right here. And previously what we were checking to return was that the character state was no action or basically no input was being added. They were in their idle state. This though allows for a bug so I can show you 
very easy to test it on controller, a little bit harder on keyboard. If we are to press down and then over, since we've kind of released the down with the joystick, we can move, but we're not in the idle state, so we can't transition from crouch back to idle. So this allows movement while we're crouching. We don't want that. So instead of checking for no action, what we should really be checking for is that we are not in any of the states that will keep us in crouching, such as crouching or crouch blocking. So we have our character reference, we grab our character state enum off of it, and then instead of checking equal enum, we check not equal enum. And then again, I have crouching and crouch blocking. Then I put these together with an and bool and put this result into the result node. Now when we do that, let's load this up again. Now you'll see I can crouch, and if I go to move, if I release too much of the stick, then I move. I don't slide across the floor, I just start walking. That's how it should be. And we want to do the same for jump, so let's go ahead and look at our end jump to idle. Again, we have a lot of jumping states, but end jump is what they all go to before returning to idle. So we have end jump to idle. And before, it was just checking to see if we were in idle or no action. You would sometimes get the same result. This one was a little bit harder for me to test because it wasn't happening all the time. It kind of depends on if you land first and press the input immediately or if you're holding the input. But also, it depends on if you land on the ground or get pushed off by other forces, like when we push our characters out of the way for that collision. It certainly can cause issues, though. So instead of doing this one, we want to go ahead and do this now instead. And like I said before, we're just going to change the equal enum to a not equal enum. And we want to check for not equal to neutral jumping, not equal to forward jumping, not equal to backward jumping. Put those all into an and. By the way, you can add pins to your and node by pressing add pin. And you can remove them by right clicking on them and saying remove pin. So that's how I have three on this and node. And then I take the result of the and node and put it into the result. And this will make it so I don't slide across the ground when I am playing here. So one more time, we'll come into verses. And you'll see when I finish here, when I land, I go right into the walking state. I can wall jump. No matter what I do, I will always return to the walking state before moving. I won't slide across the ground stuck in that end jump state. And that just makes it much, much smoother. If this helped you add quarter circle inputs into your game, please subscribe. It does more for the series and myself than anything else you can do, and that is completely free. Again, I want to thank the Patreon and YouTube membership supporters for all the support. Really, really grateful for you guys. I also want to give one more reminder about the store that we just opened. So the store is not going away. You will always be able to see it and check out the cool items that we have on there. And I may mention when new items get added, but I won't mention the store every single episode. I'm just super excited about it being rolled out. You can either check it out directly under this video, see some of the items there, or actually click on the link in this iCard right here, and you'll go to it and be able to check out the products that we have. All those products go to directly support the channel. If you had any issues with this tutorial, feel free to join the Discord community. There's a link in the description. It is completely free, and I'd be happy to help you so you can keep working on your game. And with all that said, guys, that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.